hi, this is Tumka Travels and today we are in... Today we are in... And today we are in... The, the Peak, Peak District. District. The, the Lake District. District the, the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Dales. Dales. Jeremy and I are based in Manchester and we're incredibly lucky to have so many national parks on our doorstep. The Peaks, Lake District and Yorkshire Dales are all within two hours drive of our house. So we thought, now that the Covid-19 crisis has forced us to stay nearby, it was high time we explored all three. So since we've only just come out of quarantine and isolation, thank you Boris Johnson, um, we are now exploring the great British countryside around our house. And we've travelled first, only about an hour from our house, to the Peak District, uh, which is just south of Manchester. Travelling back to our house each night, our biggest aim was to see as much of the areas as we could without ever having to compromise social distancing. We highly advocate following the rules keeping a two metre distance, avoiding busy places, and wearing a face mask. So here are eight things we learned about how to socially distance on a day out in the English countryside. Avoid really popular spots like the play. Some places are absolutely heaving due to their popularity. If you read online that somewhere is the best spot in the area, then it's likely everyone else has read it too. For example, we went to Dovedale on a Wednesday morning having read that it was the prettiest spot in the Peak District and it was completely full. Even if you find yourself a car parking space, it would be impossible to maintain social distancing there, with crowds on the paths, queues to use facilities and parking machines that every person there will have touched on arrival. We drove away as soon as we arrived. Anything with an entrance fee is shut. If access to a site involves a ticket office or access through a building, it will not be open. So check websites before you go to your budget appointment. However, some really popular monuments still have their grounds open. For example, Chatsworth in the Peaks and Bolton Abbey in the Dales. But you have to book packing slots online. It keeps the numbers down, but you need to plan in advance. And in the case of Chatsworth, you can't access the landscape gardens, just the surrounding parkland. Be flexible and have multiple ideas for where you want to visit. We had to scrap around 50% of our ideas in each of the parks due to sites being closed or realising on arrival that social distancing was impossible. Remember that no site is worth putting yourself at risk for. And if something is shut or limited access, it's because it can't open safely to everyone that wants to visit it. National Trust car parks will let you pay for parking by texting a donation rather than touching a pay machine. Which is a godsend if you've forgotten to bring your hand sanitizer. Do you feel appropriately socially distanced? Yes, it's a weekday, it's quiet, there's barely no one around us, it's wonderful. Some places have got one-way system on paths to allow waterfall trails etc to remain open. For the most part, people follow the rules and that means you don't have to climb into a hedge to keep your distance from people coming in the opposite direction. Although you've got to be very patient at times. I got you a flower. Ah, oh, that's really nice. Really, really sweet. Oh, bye.
Look out for second car parks. Our trip to Malham in the Dales, for example, seemed like it wasn't going to happen because the official car park in Malham was completely full and the village teeming with non-socially distanced people. However, we took to Google Maps and discovered that two miles away there are other car parks and spots on the road where you can park away from other people. Admittedly, it meant a slightly longer walk, in this case down a steep hill to Malham Cove, but at least we could be away from people. Even though the walk back up the hill to the car nearly killed us. can, deliberately avoid going on a weekend to avoid additional crowds. We're lucky that we're teachers, so we were able to do these trips during the week of our half term. A friend of ours visited Aysgarth Falls the weekend after we went and found it crowded with people, whereas we had no problems maintaining distance. However, if going on a weekend is your only option, go to some of the lesser known sites, which are just as beautiful, but far safer. We genuinely loved exploring new parts of the English countryside that we've not seen before. So let's not talk about the trips that we had to cancel due to the coronavirus crisis. Mm, to China or Morocco? I said not to talk about them. Or even our plans for Turkey and Caucasia in the summer that might not even go ahead. Yes, well, we're all making sacrifices unfortunately. But the UK does have some amazing sites, especially if the sun's out. So if you can only stay in the UK this year, make the most of it, but stay safe and keep your distance.